All right. Shalom, shalom. We the brothers of Great Millstone, the church in Birmingham, Alabama. And as always, I want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Rakakwadash. Yeah, in the ancient Hebrew tongue, those will be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, we'd like to give double honors to our teachers, the head apostles, and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the fellow laborers out there. And as always, you believe us, the Akim, as well as the Akwaf, which will consist of your brothers, as well as your sisters alike, those of you out there who subscribe to these teachings as well. So yeah, we back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemal Shai. Got the brother Barak with me and the spirit is on us once more to go into another quick lesson, which this sitting right here is somewhat inspired in part by a video which was uploaded by the elder Karataza out in Vegas concerning our presentation and pretty much the overall nature of it and how it wasn't set up an effort to grab the people, which is an idea that stems back pretty much to the foundation of the world. Or in other words, the origins to when the Heavenly Father began to raise up and send forth the prophets, which was perfected at the coming of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, which when you consider this present day gathering, well, it serves as nothing more than the physical manifestation of that very ministry. We're nothing more than the extension of the ministry of our Lord, Yahweh Shah, meaning Yahweh Shah took that very same approach. He didn't extend peace to each and every so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American under the banner of them being Israelites. And we continue in that legacy, which that can be proven by reading, um, what's that, the book of Matthew, the 15th chapter, around the 24th verse, where Yahweh Shai was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which when you consider the two-thirds, they're not considered as sheep. They're referred to as uh, scorpions and vipers, man. You see? Matter of fact, let's begin in the book of Matthew, the 13th chapter, Baba Kasha, in the ninth verse, beginning at the ninth verse. Uh -huh. Which we often, you know, go into this precept, and rightfully so. Which this scripture, when read with understanding through spiritual lenses, if you will, it gives you a glimpse into even our Lord's approach, Yahweh Shai's approach, as touching the calling and, and gathering of his elect. That was only extended to a few, the initiated. All right, come on. Right. Con, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 13, verse 9. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. So right there, there are stipulations. You have to meet certain qualifications and requirements in order to even entertain this form of teaching. Read that again. Who have ears to hear, let them hear. Right. So your faculties, you know, your cylinders must be firing, right? Your pistons. <laughs> you know, uh, your senses must be exercised. Your spiritual antennas must be up in order to partake in the council of Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parables? Right, why speakest unto who? Unto them, which is concerning everybody outside of the company of the disciples at that time. The Lord wasn't speaking to them plainly. You know, he was speaking in similar tools. He wasn't speaking apparently to the people. That was reserved for his disciples. Read that part one more time. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Right, to the people in dark sands. Go ahead. He answered and hey, said, hey, Hold up. I, can I say, right? Uh -huh. hey, that proves if Yahweh Shah was driven by gathering each and every Israelite, <laughs> he would have spoke to them plainly, man. Pretty much he was speaking over their heads. You see? Uh, that's considered king's language. You know, if you're in a certain bracket 
you, you speak a certain language, you know? And this is what sets us apart. This is what makes you holy, which when you go into that word holy, it simply translates to being separate. So what set us apart was served as that wedge, if you will, betwixt the believers versus the unbelievers is the ability to digest Yahweh's shot, which is his testimony, this word. Go ahead, up. He answered and said unto them, because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. You see that? So if you claim to be an ambassador of Yahweh Shah, right, then this precept really should serve as a cornerstone precept in your arsenal. Because again, it gives you a glimpse even to into Yahweh Shah's approach. He only disclosed the secrets to his disciples, the prophets who will in turn convey those mysteries to the believers. Hey, and that messed the disciples' heads up. All right, when he read this, they was like, why are you, you know, breaking it down to the people? And what they didn't understand was Yahweh Shah, first and foremost, was not dancing to the beat of his own drum. He was in harmony with the will of his heavenly father. And ultimately, he was fulfilling biblical prophecy. Matter of fact, let's go there. Uh, Psalms, the 78th chapter. Uh, We're going to begin at the first verse. Yahweh Shah. What do we mean when we say Yahweh Shah was following the will of his father? He was pretty much following the script. Because when you go back to the records, it outlines the way Yahweh Shah would go about pushing forth the ministry, man. And it would be in secrecy. Or oh, what's that? Uh, Song of Songs, the Song of Solomon? Come the fourth chapter? Yep. All right. Uh, um, Iron and Yep. <laughs> Isaiah, the eighth chapter. Seal the law amongst my disciples. Mm -hmm. And we just read also in Matthew the 13th chapter, where Yahweh Shah when disclosing the terms and conditions, if you will, of, of his ministry, well, it had nothing to do with the masses. It was only that that information was only reserved and laid up for the elect. All right, so you got it up. Khan, the book of Psalms 78 and 1. Give ear, O oh my people. Yep, read that again. Give ear, O oh my people. Right, which pretty much complements what we just read in Matthew, the 13th chapter, where Yahweh Shah made the statement, who have ears to hear. See? And that only um, associates and aligns with the elect. So this is who the Lord's people is. All right? Because, you know, technically out of the, what, 18 nations on the planet Earth, there is a chosen. And that chosen would be the nation of Israel as a whole. But even amongst that chosen, there is a chosen, which would be the elect. And that's the song we sing, which have proven to be a challenge for most to, to handle. All right? The, the average person out there, uh, what's that definition for uh, mysteries? The, the mere mortals? Kind. The ordinary mortals, they're not going to be able to wrap their mind around that idea. Why? Because they have been fashioned and shaped and molded through the ideologies, philosophies, and overall wine of the harlot, okay, which is a symbol of Esau. That uh, uh, vibration that is on display through his education, you know, legislations and laws, down to his trends have consumed the minds of our people. They have been taken by that gen, that snare. Oh, what's that, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter? Uh, yep. The God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe it not. Go ahead, up. Yep. It says, um, give ear, O oh my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Right. And the words of the Lord's mouth is brought forth courtesy of the prophets. The messengers, beginning with Yahweh Shah. All right. And the only ones who would be able to hearken or yield to those words, to that report, would be the Lord's people. Matter of fact, hold that and um, give me uh, Galatians, uh, the yeah. sixth chapter. Oh, yeah. And there's also another scripture. Um, I probably could pull it up 
but comes to mind uh, as touching the virgin of Israel. Mm. All right. Uh, yeah, because because you, you have Israel, then you have the Israel of the Most High. All right, you have Israel, you have the Virgin of Israel. You know, you have the chosen, and you have the chosen of the chosen. You have that elect nation Israel, then you have the elect of that elect nation. You see, and again that contributes to the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Hey, even amongst the talking heads in Israel, because we understand that amongst you so-called Christians out there, you know, in a broad sense, those of you who actually subscribe to the Bible under whatever denomination, this is a stumbling block for you, man. All right. But this also applies to guys with garments, you know, guys with fringes who puts forth that world friendly Israelite spirit you know, the approaches to call in all so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, that's not in harmony with the will of your how about some outside. Like these guys are over Mississippi mm. or war on them who's campaigning. Check this out now. They campaigning for us to wait on niggas to wake up. <laughs> to wait on a nigga to come across a video. You know, he was he looking at uh, uh, YouTube shorts. Then he come across one of our videos and he have an epiphany. He thump out the black and mild, and then he beeline his way to a camp, man. When the scripture, hey, you, you guys are not knowing the scriptures, because pursuant to, uh, what's that, Isaiah, the sixth chapter, I want to say, uh, it tells you that these niggas won't wake up until the cities be left desolate. All right, come on. God, the book of Galatians 6 and 16. And as many as walk according to this rule. There's another requirement. That's another stipulation, which actually falls under the law. These are laws that we read in here. This mm -hmm. directly uh, links back to the ordinance of, of the heavenly father, Yahweh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. All right. So you have to walk a certain walk. You have to walk according to this rule. Read that again. God. And as many as walk according to this rule. Peace be on them. Right. Peace be on that particular number. Huh. Those particular spirits that walk according to that, that rule, who follow the, the requirements and the qualifications, if you will, that's needed to receive, you know, the salvation, mercy, and overall favor of your how by Shem Shah. You have to walk a certain walk. Well, if that applies to you, then the scriptures say, peace be unto you. Huh. That wasn't written to sound tough. That actually goes into the time of trouble, man, which is looming. When all hell break loose, the Lord is going to uh, uh, allow his peace to rest on you. Huh. All right? Peace be on those spirits, not everybody. Read that one more time from the top. And as many as walk according to this rule, peace be on them. See, peace be on them. Huh. <laughs> Go ahead. And mercy. And what? And mercy. And mercy. So the mercy of the Lord and what makes it precious is the fact that it wasn't extended to everybody. You have to walk according to a, a certain rule. You have to meet the requirements. You have to put on as the elect. Or oh, what's that? Colossians? Uh, the third chapter, right? Uh -huh. Go ahead. And upon the Israel of the Most High. See, so there's an Israel and there's an Israel of the Most High. All right? You have Israel, which another point, Israel is actually referred to as the saints in a broader sense. But when you narrow it down, they're uh, uh, the congregation of the saints. And we're going to get into that. We're going to get into a little of that. All right. And that separation, the Lord's sheep. Mm -hmm. And you know the, the, the reason and you know, there's a method to why the Lord referred to the elect as sheep. Versus those vipers, you know, that the two-thirds is, is, is referred to. That's a separation. All right. So come on. Let's go back. Con, the book of Psalms 78 and 1. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Right. So the only ones who will give ear, who will hearken to the message and yield to the report, will be the Lord's people. 
and they will be equipped with certain attributes such as eyes to see and ears to hear spiritually. All right, go ahead. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. Yep, go ahead. I will open my mouth in a parable. Yeah, read that again. I will open my mouth in a parable. Yep, go ahead. I will utter dark sayings of old. See, so let's go back to Matthew the 13th chapter. Right, this should make more sense as touching Yahweh Shai's approach concern, concern and gathering his elect. Go ahead. St. Matthew 13 and 10. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? Yep, go ahead. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Which again mirrors what we just read in the prophecy in Psalms the 7 8 chapter. It was given unto them, meaning his people. Remember Psalm 7, 8, and 1? Give ear, O my people. I will speak in parables and dark sayings. So the disciples, they didn't understand that Yahweh Shah was not dancing to the beat of his own drum. In fact, he was, again, following the will of the Heavenly Father. He was following the script. He was fulfilling prophecy when he spoke to the people in parables. And again, what was the method to that madness, if you will? to drive a wedge in, in, in between Israel to serve as a separator of the uh, rebels versus the, the believers, you know, those who was considered the unbelievers of our Lord, Yahweh Shai, versus those who love his appearing as it is written. All right. You got anything? Got? I know, I ain't got nothing. Okay. Cut. So yeah, let's go from there. Let's let's get into this, and this is going to be brief. All right, we're going to hit the points and be done with it. And Lord willing, you know you all are edified out there. All right, so uh, let's go to the Book of Psalms, the seventy-fourth chapter, and we're going to begin at the first verse. And you're going to see where the idea of presenting the doctrine to only a few, you know, to those who would be considered worthy, the elect of the nation of Israel, and that idea actually links back to Yahweh Shah, man. It directly goes back to the ministry of Yahweh Shah. All right, come on. Come on. The book of Psalms, 74 and 1. O Yahweh Shemel Shah, why hast thou cast us out forever? Why does thy anger smoke against the sheep of thy pasture? Right, the sheep of thy pasture. Huh. All right. <laughs> you know, you have a farm. You have different animals that's all under your control. But the, the scriptures are speaking about the sheep. And again, you're going to see where that, that goes back to Yahweh Shai and his presentation which we serve as a manifestation, an extension, if you will, of that very ministry. Come on. Remember thy congregation. Right, remember thy congregation, man. Now, real quick, let's look up that word congregation. Hey, because uh, even when you go into the chosen and the elect, it takes you back to that word, remember. Um, uh, what's that? Is it in the Apocrypha? What is it? Uh, uh, it um, is it he said show favor to his saints? Oh, he, uh, has, he, oh, he has respect unto his chosen. Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. Right? He has respect unto his chosen. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you know what? I think that's that... Um... I think that's that wisdom of Solomon. Um, right. Let's get that, Baba Kasha. And again, there's key buzzwords that should jump out. All right. That word, uh, uh, sheep, you know. This is who Yahweh Shah extended that peace to, man, the sheep. All right. 
So we wasn't sent forth. The prophets wasn't raised up and sent forth to entertain the two thirds, man. All right, and, and, and to sit, you know, uh, sit to the side and wait, sit by your side and, uh, and hold our breath till you wake up. <laughs> no, the word has accomplished what it was set out to do, and that's pretty much the rest is settled on the hearts and minds of the elect who will hear the word, will receive the word, be sealed, right, with that Holy Spirit of promise and ultimately see the salvation of our Lord Yahweh Shah as promised. All right, you got it up. Khan, the book of wisdom of Solomon 4 and 15. This the people saw and I understood it not. Right, this see? Because the people, they don't understand this concept of the Bible, which has been presented as a um, a book of no boundaries, you know, whatever ethnicity or lineage you might derive from, you know, it's a come one, come all vibration that comes with it. Well, our presentation is the direct opposite, is in contrast to what you have been conditioned to believe. That's why the people see it and they're not able to quite wrap their mind around it. They're not able to receive it. And ultimately, they reject this idea. Read that again. This the people saw and understood it not. Mm -hmm. Neither laid they up in this. It's like neither laid they up this in their minds. Meaning they didn't consider this. All right, go ahead. That his grace and his mercy is with his saints. See that? That his grace and his mercy is with his saints. Did not we just read that in Galatians, the sixth chapter? Well, peace be on you and mercy be on the Israel of the Most High. So that's what we read in here. Read that again. It says that his grace and his mercy is with his saints. Mm -hmm. And that he have respect unto his chosen. The Lord have respect unto his chosen. Now we understand the scriptures tell us that the Lord have no respect of persons. So what does the scripture really mean when it says he has respect unto his chosen, which would be his elect, the sheep? Let's go to the etymology real quick, Art, since you got it queued up. God. And pull up that word respect. God. God. That word respect says uh, relationship consideration yeah the lord would consider us mm -hmm. go ahead it says regard uh looking at literally act of looking back act of looking back when you um look up that word respect and you break it down which is that word is a compound word re meaning back inspect means to wet look or see Mm -hmm. So that word respect, when you break it down, it really means to look back. So when all hell break loose, the Lord is going to remember the promise that he made with our forefathers, man. He's going to preserve us as promised, as it is written, because that's the story. The Lord would preserve a remnant. That's the chosen. So that respect that the Lord is going to show unto us is actually him looking back or remembering us. Matter of fact, continue. God, it says... Look, look back, regard, consider, uh, read back. Is this specter look at, mm -hmm. spec to observe? Right. So now let's go back to that uh, Psalms 74 again. Kind. Second verse. Then we're going to go back to that definition, but let's read the precept again. Kind. The book of Psalms 74 and verse 2. Remember that congregation. Right. Remember that congregation. And when you remember something, you look back at it. That's respect. When you remember something. All right. I got a precept for y'all. Yeah, come on. Book of Isaiah. Chapter 49. I believe. Let's see. Kind. 
the book of Isaiah 49 and 14. It reads, But Zion said, The Lord have forsaken me, and my Lord have forgotten me. Mm -hmm. Can a woman forget her suckling child, that she should have not compassion on the son of her womb? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they may forget, yet will I not forget thee. See that? Which goes into the Lord's respect for his chosen. He will not forget us. When the famine began to descend upon America, Babylon the Great, the Lord is not going to forget his chosen, man. All right? When Esau began to move in on you through his military and his advances, the Lord is not going to forget his chosen. He's going to remember you. Go ahead, I Behold, I have graven thee upon the palm of my hands. Hmm. Thy walls are continually before me. See that? So the Lord considers us. All right? So we're in a very privileged position by being in this gathering. The congregation. All right, so matter of fact, let's go back to that. Uh. Come. Psalm 74 and 2. Remember thy congregation. Mm-hmm. Which thou has purchased of old. <laughs> right. See that? That goes back to your house size sacrifice, which by the way, it wasn't for the entire nation of Israel when you go into the particulars, if you will. All right. Because you can make the broad statement that the Lord died for Israel, which is truth to that, because ultimately the two thirds is going to benefit from that sacrifice through the loins of the elect. But ultimately, the Lord shed his blood for his elect, man. All right. And again, the nation of Israel is going to benefit from that marriage. All right. Read that again. Remember that congregation which thou has purchased of old. Right. And that's only dealing with the elect. And that could be proven by, oh, what's that? Ephesians, the first chapter, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Go ahead. The rod of thy inheritance which thou has redeemed. See? And, and Yahweh Shah is the, the redeemer. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This Mount Zion wherein thou has dwelt. See that? All right, so now let's, and that Mount Zion is a separation. All right, so come on. Uh, um, let's go back to that word congregation right there. Con. That word congregation. Strong's H 57 12 says congregation gathering. Right, gathering. You see that? So is each and every so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American in this gathering, in this hearing? Of course not. Hmm. You know, even from a global scope, all the different camps, the different platforms which the Lord have raised up, which are nothing more than altars. All right, from the physical camps to these live streams and videos, all right, these epistles. Well, it, only the sheep is gathering as promised. Huh. All right. Are oh, you got them thing up? Oh, no, no, I ain't got that up. Okay, now, real quick, from there, go to Psalms 149, and we're gonna, we finna examine this word congregation. We're going to get to the bottom of this through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shah. And ultimately, you know, is an effort to uh, bring clarity, all right? The objective is to be edified, right? But but ultimately, to comfort you, to comfort all of us, all right, in the sense of understanding that being here is nothing to gloss over. It's certainly nothing to take light. We are in a very privileged position. This thrusts us in the and into great company by being here and not just being here, you know, just a corpse, but being animated, mm -hmm. being alive, understanding what you're involved in. Because if you are able to digest this form of information, then you're considered the living. Right? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, 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 I like what the scripture say, let everything with breath yeah. praise the Lord. <laughs> Uh, you got it. Okay, the book of Psalms 149 and 1. Praise ye the Lord. 
Yahweh Bashim Shai sing unto Yahweh Bashim Shai a new song. Right, which complements Revelation, the 14th chapter, concerning the Lord's elect. Remember, the scriptures say, these are they who are without fault before the throne. All right? So that's that separation. Again, that's Galatians 6 and 16. Peace and mercy be upon them. Go ahead. And his praise in the congregation of saints. See, so you have the saints, right? But then you have the congregation of saints. That's a separation. Now, let's get a little more to it. Let's click up this word. Let's, let's click on this word right here, congregation. The word congregation, uh, Strong's 8, 69, 51. Assembly, company. Right, assembly, a company. Mm -hmm. Right? So again, you know, this is an effort to comfort you and understanding that this is not a coincidence. This is nothing random. The fact that the setting is betwixt teacher and student where, where wisdom is on display and the objective is to edify and to bring clarity. Well, it's all played out in the form of the assembly. See? Go ahead. Con, it says convocation uh, assembly for evil counsel, war, evasion, religious purposes. Right, and this, hey, this is a council. This is an assembly of uh, evil counsel as well. Because mm. uh, we expound on the bad times. Mm -hmm. uh, is it not written better to go into the house of mourning? Oh. So this is a solemn return to our power versus that festive, world friendly, you know. Um, social media Israelite outlet. Go ahead. It says company of returning exiles. See, the company of returning exiles. Now, hold up. Is it not written only a remnant shall return? Uh -huh. So the congregation of the saints is a separation. All right? You have the saints, then you have the congregation of the saints which that congregation goes back to who the Lord was sent for. And again, what's that? Matthew, the 15th chapter, and the 24th verse. I was only sent to the lost sheep or, or, or to the sheep of Israel. Mm -hmm. Yep. Which is also uh, outlined in the book of uh, Matthew, the 10th chapter, beginning at the 5th and 6th verse, where Yahweh sent forth his disciples with the commands of not extending that peace offering to the Gentiles or to any other Samaritans in their cities, enter ye not, but go rather to where the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. So you see with this word congregation here in Psalms, let's go back to that verse. All right, we already read in Psalm 74 where the Lord was set to remember his congregation, remember the congregation. What we read right here in uh, Psalms. What is this? Psalms 140, um, 149, I believe. Mm -hmm. Yep. In one. Well, let's read it. Kai, Psalm 149 and one. Praise you the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah. Sing unto the Lord, Yahweh Shemel Shah, a new song. And his praise in the congregation of saints. Right. So this congregation right here, and you're going to see what is actually uh, directly links to the ministry of Yahweh Shah and who he was uh, sent to extend that peace and mercy, that salvation to, you know, that overall favor of the Heavenly Father. All right. So now let's go a little deep into that word congregation. Right. Let's pull it up in the uh, online etymology. Yep, you got it up. God, the word congregation, a gathering, assembly. Right, okay. see that? So it's mm. essentially the same thing, a gathering, an assembly. And again, this excludes just any so-called Negro, Latino, and Native American. Go ahead. A crowd, it says, 
an organized group mm. as a religious order or body of scholars. Hmm. Which that word scholar, you know, it actually goes back to school. Mm -hmm. So again, this is West on display. All right. There's a, a schoolmaster overtone. We are all being groomed and polished up inwardly so that we might be presented as a chaste version at the return of our Lord Yahweh Shah, you know, without any black spot or blemish, which comes in the form of different ideologies, philosophies, all right, wayward ideas that's contrary to the testimony of Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. It says, um, act of congregating, um, let me jump down, and assembling, it's like an assembling together Union, society, uh, congare mm -hmm. to herd together. Right. So it says, um, congra, congra, uh, all right, congregre. It says, okay, okay, it says to herd together. I believe you, you skipped one. Jump up right there, that noun of action. It's like, uh, Right say? after that society. Oh, it says noun of action from past participial stem of congregate to herd together. Right, to herd together. So you see what this word congregation starting to sound a lot more like a <laughs> flock. Right? Go ahead. It says collect in a flock, we collect in a flock. Go ahead, swarm, assemble. It says from assimilated form of calm together. Uh, con it says gragre. All right, so so pretty much, uh, con you know goes in together or or with. Mm -hmm. All right, go ahead. Okay. Gregory to collect into a flock. See, to collect into a flock. Go ahead, continue. Up. Gather. It says from Greeks, Gregory's a flock. A flock, right? So, simply put, that word congregation, when you break it down, it translates to with the flock or, or herding the flock together. You see? Mm hmm. So let's go back to Psalms again. Uh, Psalms um, 147 and 1. The book of Psalms. Uh, so like it's uh, 149. That was you. Talking? Like it, 149, yep. Uh, Psalm 149 and 1. Praise you, the Lord, Yahweh Bashmiah Shah. Sing unto Yahweh Bashmiah Shah a new song. And praise his, it's like in his praise in the congregation of saints. Right. So again, you have the saints and you have the congregation of the saints, which we just looked up that word congregation, and it translates to herding together or with the flock. All right. Now, how does this uh, uh, ties into the ministry, the very ministry of our Lord Yahweh Shai? Well, let's go there. Uh, uh, what's that, St. John? Um, is it St. John the 17th chapter or St. John 21 mm -hmm. and 17? I kind of get them mixed up. Yep, uh, St. John 21. Right, yep. and, uh, you know what? Um, let's 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 start at the 14th verse. Okay, <clears throat> the book of St. John. Chapter 21 and verse 14, it reads, This is now the third time that Yahweh Shah showed himself to his disciples. After that, he was risen from the dead. All right, so after our Lord ascended to the Father, he revealed and showed himself to his disciples plenty of times, but this was the third time. Hmm. All right, go ahead. So when they had died, Yahweh Shai said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, 
lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. See, feed my lambs. <laughs> <laughs> so look, you have a shot. He was expressing a certain sense of urgency right here. You know, and it was concerning his lambs. And, and what contribute to that sense of urgency? Well, continue. He said unto him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He said unto him, Yeah, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my sheep. Mm -hmm. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Right, so this proves the sense of urgency. You know, Yahweh Shah wasn't, you know, just loosely speaking to Simon Peter, which by the way, Simon Peter served as a symbol of the church in the gathering, right? Mm -hmm. Saying he would be that rock in which the church would be built. So the Lord asked Simon Peter three times this question, do you love me? Well, if you do, continue. Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? Mm -hmm. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, thou knowest that I love thee. Yep, go ahead. Yeah, I said unto him, feed my sheep. Feed my sheep, thus the congregation. <laughs> In the very setting that we are part of. So that's proof right there that when you read the scriptures as touching the congregation, which serves as a separation, it directly links to the ministry of Yahweh Shah, which is now on display in the form of, you know, the prophets beginning with the apostles and elder bishops and the sincere men who have been thrust out there in the public's eye, you know, and given the task of furthering and advancing the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shah. Well, it's all an effort to call in the Lord's elect. All right, and together, his sheep. All right. Uh -huh. So, you got anything else up? Um. Yeah, I, I got a precept for you real quick. Yeah, yep, and you can expound on it. Kind of, yeah, just going back, like you said, um, you brought out earlier concerning um Zion and the Israel of the Most High. Those are the um the different names that are um, buzzwords of the elect. Right. Because those names are meaning like such as Zion, like I said, the memorial. Those who the Lord is gonna remember. Right. And um, and that's who the Lord is gathering, you know. So uh, this is um Psalms 147, 147 and two. The Lord do a build up Jerusalem. That's so it. that's that flock, you know. That's that uh, that Zion, Mount Zion, you know. That's the elect, because mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the city of peace, and the Israel of the Most High are the ones that's going to receive the peace, as we read in Galatians six chapter. It says He gathered together the outcasts of israel so really those are the ones that are separate you know the that um that israel of the most high you know that uh that nation uh they said they're righteous within that nation you know which right, is the, right you know you got it out yeah that nation be found with uh no guile in it yep that's it and it's also a scripture uh, in ezekiel the 34th chapter well, well uh, the Lord said he will even search his sheep. He, uh, mm. Behold, I even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. Mm. Well, this is what's on display, all right? And ultimately, it gives credence to the idea of not being sent forth, you know, the overall nature of the ministry, not being an effort to grab the people. Mm -hmm. So we was here to grab the sheep, man. That's who the Lord is grabbing and, and, and rounding up and, and herding together once more under that staff. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, what's that? Uh, Psalms, the 23rd chapter. Yeah, that's it. Hey, when you consider uh, that dynamic betwixt the shepherd and his sheep, he keep them in line. He keep them under that hedge by way of that staff, mm -hmm. which in this case serves as the word. That staff had that hook on it. All right, you get hooked in, 
and, and you know, he'll use that step to tap you over the head if you get out of line, which all symbolizes the scriptures, all right? And that's what the gathering revolves around. We are gathered under the banner of the word, which is our Lord Yahweh Shah. All right. So with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rakaku Dash, double honors to our teachers, the head, apostles, and elders, the great millstone. Shalom to the fellow laborers out there. And as always, you believe us to the next time. Shalom. Shalom. Bye. 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 Soon. Very soon.